Here we have a SDR uh, transceiver. It's actually a QRP, which means a low power transceiver, maximum power output 20 watts. Normal transceivers put out 100 watts. And then a proper QRP low power one is 5 watts. This one is, you can set it anywhere, uh, probably from about 1 watt up to 20 watt. I'm not sure the exact settings. It has a lot of settings. Um, this differs from the dongle in that, of course, it's a standalone uh, receiver, transceiver, and it doesn't have to be connected to a computer. You can connect it to a computer, but in this particular radio, it's quite a, a business. You have to use a stereo sound card input, and most sound card inputs, unfortunately, are not stereo. They're mono, so that's a bit of a problem. But uh, the screen is extremely small, as you can see. It's only 1.8 inches diagonally. That's across this way but very sharp and pretty clear so you can read almost all the information on there even if you don't have excellent eyesight. The uh, display down below, this is your spectrum and then below that's the waterfall, that white line running down there. So that will show that you sent it on the station. You can see that is your bandwidth over here which is showing the setting over there. So that's how wide your bandwidth, you can vary that uh, to whatever setting which you want. Normally I set it on about 5 for uh, amplitude modulation or shortwave AM. Uh, I find that is a good setting. If I go to lower sideband or upper sideband, uh, which is like the hand bands or utility bands, I will then set it much lower. Normally I think the default is 2.4. I would set it uh, kilohertz. I set it down to um, uh, around about 2.2 .2 or 1.8 depending on the noise or interference. There are lots of various settings on this uh, radio that you can use. It's obviously designed for radio amateurs. Uh, it can be used for a shortwave listener, but I would not really recommend it for shortwave listening, <coughs> although it's very sensitive. I've tested it against my communications receivers, and whatever they can hear, this radio can hear. Sometimes they are better, and sometimes this radio is better. Uh, uh, it, but sensitivity is excellent on it, I must say. So uh, very popular with the ham community. Uh, the main disadvantage of it for shortwave listening is the fact that the knob is, is click, 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 click like that. So every time you turn it, it's not a free spinning knob. <laughs> it has detents. 
and of course it's extremely small so it's rather tiring you can enter the frequency on the uh, microphone which has its own entry pad you can enter the frequency in there you go frequency input and then say 11.875 there's the point there in frequency input and then that will display on the radio replace this up here and then <coughs> move you to that frequency but um so that is a, a practical way to move around the band free, uh, quickly without having to tune around on the knob however <coughs> when you're in a particular band say the 25 meter band uh, which runs from 11600 to 12100 i like to turn the knob like you get on normal transceivers here a normal communication receiver is nice and easy and this one down here <coughs> you've got a nice big knob and smooth action you can tune it easily not go click 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 like you have to do on this one so uh, i would say for uh, shortwave listening i wouldn't definitely wouldn't recommend it but for uh, ham radio operators who want a portable radio that you can take with you and uh, use it off a battery very low current drain gives you quite a decent amount of power output 20 watts i've actually used it with my ram license and spoken to uh, radio amateurs and got quite good reports with it even when band conditions are not good so it certainly gets out uh, it has a speech processor which increases your um, not your output power but it increases the uh, comp it, comp it acts like a compressor so it makes sure that you when you're on sideband you have to keep the uh, the speech level, the output power level varies according to um, the amount of compression that the microphone delivers. So uh, with the process that keeps your output power up higher than when you normally speak, because your voice is not at one level, it drops up and down. So it kind of keeps your voice at that level, which drives the radio. So I'm not explaining it very well, but uh, that's basically what it does keeps it at the same output power level more or less so you don't get ups and downs with the power and that helps you the other person that's at the end to hear you better anyway quite a lot of waffle from me this is not my radio it belongs to a ham friend of mine who lent it uh, to me to play around with and make some notes for him so that when he gets it back i can give him my comments on it not as a test but to help him to uh, navigate his way around the radio and uh, use the controls uh, to the best of the, their ability to reduce interference and to make the radio sound clearer. I do find the external speaker helps a bit, as you can see in the demonstration. Anyway, that's a bit too much for me, so uh, I hope you found this interesting. There are lots of videos and things on the G90, but nothing much from a shortwave listener's point of view. So sorry about the camera juggling, but my hands are not so steady today for some reason. Cheers.